Let's run through some uh, specific methane mitigation measures. Okay, the sectors here again, extraction and transport of fossil fuel, waste management and agriculture. Uh, mitigation measures including, include extended pre-mine degasification and recovery and oxidation of methane from ventilation air from the coal mines. Okay, so coal mines obviously remain a major source, oil and gas recovery also remain a major source. So there are suggested extensions of these, uh, of converting it into CO2 and using CO2 itself to either uh, sequester it somewhere or to drive more uh, extraction of oil and gas. Uh, extended recovery and utilization, that's the part, rather than venting of associated gas and improved control of unintended fugitive emissions as they are referred to from production of oil and natural gas, reduced gas leakage from long distance transmission pipelines. Uh, as we saw the emission, uh, the leaks cannot easily be seen by eye, it's not in the visible, you will need in, uh, infrared sensors to see uh, the leaks, but uh, there are many reports arguing that these leaks are not very small, they are significant contributors. Um, okay, waste management, uh, separation and treatment of biodegradable municipal waste through recycling, composting and anaerobic digestion as well as landfill gas collection with combustion and utilization. So either flaring it off or using it for other applications. Upgrading primary wastewater treatment to secondary tertiary treatment with gas recovery and overflow control. So usually you can just release whatever gas is emitted uh, uh, and into the air and let it be or you can invest further and go from primary treatment to secondary treatment where the gases are extracted and captured and then taken care of with uh, combustion and utilization again. Agriculture, control of methane emissions from livestock mainly through farm scale anaerobic digestion. It's a very good way of producing methane for various applications like cooking, for example, or heating water, etc., um, or heating homes. Um, through farm scale a uh, anaerobic digestion of manure from cattle and pigs, intermittent aeration of continuously flooded rice paddies. We mentioned this before that rice paddies apparently don't need to be flooded all the time. Uh, and there is even a method called Madagascar rice, I think, which actually uh, is argued to be even doable on a rooftop where no flooding is done uh, at all. Okay, Flooding is mainly to take care of weeds. Rice is very sensitive, so it's become a traditional method and people blindly follow it. And it's not easy to make the behavioral change to other methods to reduce uh, flooding and reduce methane emissions. Okay, So employ intermittent, uh, the measures a, uh, aiming to reduce methane emissions include, again, uh, employ intermittent paddy aeration, uh, recover from wastewater, recover from oil and natural gas, that's just being burned off here, recover from landfill, just uh, anaerobic digestion happens here as well because oxygen is in limited supply uh, in these kind of dumps. Uh, recover from livestock in uh, livestock manure. Change in the livestock feed. We talked about uh, seaweed, for example. Reduce pipeline leakages and capture from coal mines. Okay, so. Eating meat is uh, another source of uh, methane directly and indirectly. Obviously beef production is very expensive environmentally per calorie. It takes huge amount of uh, water, grains, land uh, and methane emission to produce one pound of steak that you want to eat or a hamburger uh, you want to eat. So beef is ultimately the worst food in terms of environmental impacts. Um, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change examined the estimated impact of greenhouse gas emissions of the world's population adopting various diets. So it is looking here at greenhouse gas, uh, greenhouse gas mitigation potential in terms of CO2 equivalent gigatons uh, per year. I included, uh, I included this here because CO2 equivalent also includes uh, methane, okay, so it's converted into CO2. 
non animal source of food uh, no animal source of food so emissions that were avoided through global use of nuclear power uh, is up here and you can save the same amount by going to a, a vegetarian or a vegan food obviously you have to be careful about uh, nutrition getting enough proteins and omega-3 and whatever else the body needs so not all vegan diets guarantee uh, complete nutrition so one has to be careful about that and there are cultural aspects as well meat eating is big parts of several cultures meat or seafood once a month uh, is going to uh, be less than the carbon uh, saved by going to nuclear power so it's going to be uh, at six gigaton uh, per year limited meat and dairy so you are adding to the vegan diet here but you are less than meat and seafood limited sugar meat and dairy so sugar cane is uh, an issue there uh, so meat and dairy limited animal source uh, food uh, animal source food rich in calories and so on and so forth so you can see that you can make a diet choice to reduce overall emissions but also methane emissions so food choices are definitely a part of methane mitigation okay so to remember met the methane so anthropogenic sources of methane can be controlled and methane is a very strong green greenhouse gas uh, so one it's not directly harmful to human health but indirectly it's responsible for 50 percent of the tropospheric ozone production ozone is tremendously bad for global warming uh, but also for human health so co-benefits of methane reduction also come through ozone and all these uh, other greenhouse uh, warming effects 